under normal circumstances, what happens is you wake up. And what happens when you wake up? You open your eyes. When you open your eyes, light comes into your eyes. Now, the way this system works is that you have a particular set of neurons in your eye. They're called retinal ganglion cells, or brain neurons. Again, the retina is just the one piece of your brain, actually two pieces, because most of you have two retinas, that resides outside the skull. When light comes into the eye, there's a particular group of retinal ganglion cells or type of retinal ganglion cells that perceives a particular type of light and communicates that to this clock that resides right above the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus has connections with essentially every cell and organ of your body. Now, it's vitally important that we get light communicated to this central clock in order to time the cortisol and melatonin properly. When I say properly, I can say that with confidence because we know based on a lot of evidence that if you don't get your cortisol and melatonin rhythms right, there are tremendously uh, broad and bad effects on cardiovascular health, dementia, metabolic effects, learning, depression. I really want to focus on what we can do, what happens when we do this correctly and how to do it correctly. When we wake up, our eyes open. Now, if we're in a dark room, there isn't enough light to trigger the correct timing of this cortisol melatonin thing, these rhythms. These neurons in our eye that set the circadian clock and then allow our circadian clock to set all the clocks of all the cells and organs and tissues of our body responds best to a particular quality of light and amount of light. And those are the qualities of light and amount of light that come from sunlight. So these neurons, what they're really looking for, although they don't have a mind of their own, is the sun at what we call low solar angle. When the sun is low in the sky, there's a particular contrast between yellows and blues that triggers the activation of these cells. So if you wake up and you look at your phone or your computer, or you flip on a bunch of artificial lights, will these cells be activated? And the answer is sort of, they'll be activated, but not in the optimal way. What you want to do is get sunlight in your eyes as close to waking as possible. These neurons don't know sunlight per se. What they respond best to, however, is the quality and amount of light that comes in when the sun is low in the sky. That means that if you can watch the sunrise, great. You still want to get outside and view sunlight. You don't need the sunlight beaming you directly in the eyes. There's a lot of photons, light energy that's scattered from sunlight at this time. The key is to get that light energy from sunlight, ideally, into your eyes. I had a discussion with a colleague of mine, Dr. Jamie Zeitzer, who's in the uh, Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Stanford, a world expert in this. And he tells me that it's 50 times less effective to view this sunlight through a window, through a car windshield, or through a side window of a car than it is to just get outside with no sunglasses and view light early in the day. Once the sun is overhead, the quality of light shifts so that you miss this opportunity to time the cortisol pulse. And that turns out to be a bad thing to do. A late shifted cortisol pulse is one of the consequences and maybe one of the causes of a lot of anxiety disorders and depression. It's a signature of depression and anxiety disorder. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.